This is the Magnetic Fields homework booklet, question 20. A rectangular coil is rotating anticlockwise at constant angular speed, with the axle at right angles to a uniform magnetic field. And the diagram shows an end-on view. So here we have the magnetic field from left to right, the axle going into the page, and you can see the orientation of the coil. At the instant shown in the diagram, the angle between the normal to the plane of the coil and the direction of the magnetic field is 30 degrees. That is shown clearly in the diagram. So you see the normal to the coil here, the magnetic field direction here, and an angle of 30 degrees between them. Please note what they're telling you here is that the angle given is the correct angle if you wish to use the equations on the data sheet. Always check this before using them, as a diagram could choose to have labelled this angle instead, and if that was labelled you couldn't just automatically substitute that into the equations. So, you are asked to state the minimum angle in degrees through which the coil must rotate from its current position in order for the EMF to reach its maximum value. So you must consider, first of all, the coil position for maximum induced EMF. Now the size of the induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. This occurs when field lines are being cut at the maximum rate. Now this occurs when the coil is horizontal. So you can picture the coil sitting horizontally and cutting directly across the field lines here, downwards and upwards on this side. This is the most efficient uh, flux cutting and the most uh, rapid change of flux linkage for the coil. So in order for the coil to be horizontal, that means it must rotate through 60 degrees. Next you're asked to calculate the minimum angle in radians through which the coil must rotate from its current position in order for the flux linkage to reach its maximum value. Now this does not coincide with the previous situation. Maximum flux linkage will occur when this coil is sitting vertically. When the coil is vertical, the entire cross-sectional area of the coil is facing the field lines. So that gives maximum flux linkage. So in order to achieve that, the coil must first rotate till it's horizontal and then carry on rotating through a further 90 degrees until it is vertical. That gives us a total of 150 degrees of rotation. Now you're asked for an answer in radians, so you now need to convert that. So 150 divided by 360 gives us the fraction of the circle, and we multiply this by 2 pi to give a value of 5 pi divided by 6 radians. You could convert that to 2.6 radians. Notice uh, it is quite unusual in physics papers for you to allow, be allowed to leave an answer in fractions and radians with a value of pi as part of the answer is really an exception to the general rule there. Next your attention is drawn to a graph uh, and you're told that th this is no longer the same starting position of the coil, so you can ignore the previous diagram. But you're told the graph shows how the flux linkage through the coil varies with time. You're asked for what physical quantity is represented by the gradient of the graph. This is just testing your knowledge of Faraday's law, that the size of the induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage. 
So rate of change of flux linkage is the gradient of this graph and rate of change of flux linkage is the size of the induced EMF. Next you're asked to calculate the number of revolutions per minute. So considering flux linkage and how that changes with time, you can see we've got a maximum negative value, a maximum positive, and then maximum negative. This would correspond to one rotation of the coil, as the magnitude of the flux linkage is a maximum twice, but the direction depends on uh, which way the coil is facing. So the time period for this rotation is 40 milliseconds. The frequency will be the reciprocal of the time period, which gives us 25 hertz. So the number of revolutions per minute is given by 25 times 60. Remember, frequency is number of revolutions per second, when we have that in hertz. So in a minute, you would have 60 times as many revolutions. Alternatively, you just might consider a minute as 60 seconds and the time for one revolution as 40 milliseconds. So the number of revolutions is the larger time divided by the smaller time. Next, you're asked to calculate the peak value of the EMF generated. Now, you can use the equation for the size of the EMF generated when you have a rotating coil, and that would be found on the data sheet. So the EMF is given by the flux density times the cross-sectional area times the number of turns, the angular velocity, and then sine of the angular velocity multiplied by the time. Now you're asked for the peak value, so the peak value, looking at this equation, will correspond to when sine omega t is 1. So you need to multiply ban by omega. Now ban is in fact the flux linkage. So you can read the maximum flux linkage from the graph. If we just have a quick look back, you can see that is 0 0.55 Weber turns. And then you can multiply by the angular velocity. So we have an angle of 2 pi radians, which is rotated through each time period. So dividing 2 pi by the time period and multiplying by the maximum flux linkage gives us a peak EMF of 86 volts. Now the next part of the question asks you to sketch a graph on the plane axes there to show how the induced EMF varies over time. Now you have just worked out a peak value for this induced EMF. So it's now a matter of uh, making that peak value uh, be represented at the correct times. So you need to look at both axes here. Now I've marked my peak value as 86.4. Um, you could actually have worked out perhaps a, a sensible scale if you wanted and then uh, made the peak come to a value that looked sensible against that. But nevertheless, this, this maximum value corresponds to what you've just calculated, so you could mark that on the graph. Now it's a matter of making the two graphs relate correctly to each other. Now remember Faraday's law gives us um, that the induced EMF is the rate of change of flux linkage. Now Lenz's law gives us this negative sign here. So if we look at this point here, this is where the gradient is a maximum. So a maximum rate of change of flux linkage occurs at 30 milliseconds. Um, now this is a negative gradient, but when we take Lenz's law into account, that gives us our maximum positive EMF.
Taking this point, again, we have a maximum gradient. The gradient is positive, but taking Lenz's law into account gives us our negative value for maximum EMF. And then finally, on the peaks of this graph, the gradient is zero. So all these points correspond to zero values of induced EMF. So just take it carefully, um, remember Faraday's law and just that extra point of reversing the sign. Um, so you can also relate that to what you've got with the equations for flux linkage and for induced EMF of a coil. So one of your equations is a cos. So if we start at this point in the graph, that would give you a cos graph. And if we start at the same time here, we have a sine graph. OK, so starting at t equals 20, we're seeing a cos graph for flux linkage and a sine graph for induced EMF. And that corresponds to the two equations that you have on the data sheet. Finally, you're told that the coil has got 550 turns and a cross-sectional area of 4 times 10 to the minus 3 metres squared. You're asked to calculate the flux density of the uniform magnetic field. Now on the first graph, you were able to see that the maximum flux linkage was 0 0.55 Weber, Weber turns. Now maximum flux linkage is given by NBA. So just rearranging then allows us to find the flux density. So we have max flux, maximum flux linkage divided by the number of turns multiplied by the area, leading to an answer of 0.25 Tesla.